It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1972, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Hey there, welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, if you want to send an audio question in, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask, or you can call in your question by dialing 61 I love OHD. And don't forget, I take email questions too. You can send those in to health at oldpodcast.com. Now, on yesterday's episode, that was episode 1971, I promised at the end of my commentary that I would go into more detail about substances that are, say, banned in Europe, but still sold here. So with that, let's get right to today's audio question and start optimizing your life. Hi, Neil. This is Dr. Sandy Anderson, chiropractor, um, yoga instructor, soon to be life coach as well. The question I have is um, looking into research on products that are listed in um, body lotion, liquid soaps, um, antibacterial products that are not healthy for us. I hear, I read, um, I know people talk about the negative effects of some of the products. Is there a place to go to be able to access what these products are, why they're bad for us, what the research is, and what we can substitute it for? Thank you. Love your program and look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Sandy. Thank you so much for taking the time to send me your audio question. It has taken me a while to respond to you. This wasn't because your question isn't interesting or important. Instead, it was really about me trying to figure out how best to respond to it. Earlier this week, I touched on this topic in my commentaries on episodes 1970 and 1971. After sharing my thoughts on those topics and mulling over your question, I feel like I'm finally ready to respond. Now, there are quite a few concerning chemicals found in our healthcare and beauty products. In the United States, the safety of skin care and beauty products falls under the Food and Drug Administration's responsibility. As their name suggests, the Food and Drug Administration is responsible for regulating the safety and wholesomeness of many of the foods we eat. Then there's the Environmental Protection Agency, which has the power to ban certain chemicals as well. The problem is that even though we have two organizations that oversee these chemicals, both of them are playing catch-up when it comes to identifying the safety of these types of products. Another reason I felt now was the time to respond to your question, Sandy, was because of recent media attention on hair straightening products and the increased risk of cancer. Some are suing the manufacturers of these hair straightening products after the U.S. National Institutes of Health found that there was a link between these products and the development of uterine cancer specifically. The authors of the study didn't point to one specific ingredient as the likely culprit, but did list possible contributors, which included parabens, bisphenol A, metals, and formaldehyde. Now, parabens have been of concern for some time. They help prevent the growth of viruses, bacteria, and the like, and are commonly found in lotions, makeup foundation, and at one point, even sunscreens. There are different paraben formulations, and the European Union has banned five of these versions because it's believed parabens can disrupt hormone production. Luckily, in the U.S., most beauty products and sunscreens no longer contain parabens, so this is less of a concern now. Another class of chemicals that are concerning are phthalates. Phthalates are added to products to provide consistency with the product's texture. We can still find phthalates in U.S.-made perfumes, nail polish, and deodorants, but they may be hard to spot because sometimes they're just referred to as fragrance on the label. The European Union has banned the use of phthalates because of their association with fertility issues, developmental problems in children, and even obesity. Another chemical, formaldehyde, has been a known cancer-causing agent for a long time, but it's still used in the U.S. to straighten hair, used in nail polishes, and in products designed to strengthen nails. Quaternium-15, 
which kind of sounds like something from Superman's home planet of Krypton, is another ingredient that we might find in eyeshadows, shampoos, and body washes. The problem with quaternium-15 is that when exposed to higher temperatures, it can turn into formaldehyde. And as I just mentioned, we know formaldehyde is not good for us. According to Scott Gottlieb, the former Food and Drug Administration commissioner, quote, there are currently no legal requirements for any cosmetic manufacturer marketing products to American consumers to test their products for safety. This means that cosmetic manufacturer can decide if they'd like to test their product for safety and register it with the FDA, end quote. While all of this news may make it easy for us to lose hope, please don't. Senator Alex Bergstein of Connecticut has been pushing for tighter regulations on these ingredients. And Senator Bergstein has said that most Americans are unaware of these chemicals in the products they purchase. So becoming aware is the first step. The next step is for us as consumers to demand change. One of the ways is to simply vote with your wallet. Don't purchase products that contain these chemicals and purchase those that don't. When it comes to specific resources, here are the ones I would consider exploring. The Center for the Science in the Public Interest, or CSPI, the Environmental Working Group, or EWG, and the Cosmetics Division of the European Union. Thank you again for taking the time to send in your audio question, Dr. Sandy. Now, if you want your question answered right here on the show, send one in. You can email one directly to health at oldpodcast.com. Or if you want your voice on the show, just like Dr. Sandy, just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. You can record right from your computer's microphone. It's really easy and you can play back and hear your message. And if you don't like it, you can do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 161-I-LOVE-OHD. That's 1-614-568-3643. All right, that'll do it for another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your continued support. I hope you have a great start to your weekend, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.